Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. I got to get something off my chest today that's been bugging me for a long time. And it's this idea that red meat is somehow bad for the planet and bad for us. It's completely wrong-headed and it all started with an article on The Lancet, which is a medical journal, about a year ago. They said that we should either quit eating or eat very little of intensively farmed red meat. And they're right about that. Intensely farmed meat is bad for the planet and bad for us. But instead of saying we should change the system back to what meat production should be, they just say quit eating it. I completely disagree with that statement and I'm going to use this video to show you exactly why. Since this article came out and during the seven years that we've had this farm, I've seen consumer habits change toward eating less meat in general and more poultry versus red meat. And I think that this is the wrong direction to be headed in. I'm looking at this as someone with boots on the ground who grows these animals. And I see what it takes to grow poultry versus beef. And I can tell you unequivocally that beef is much more healthy for the planet than poultry is. So I'm gonna go through each and show you what it takes to grow that animal and how it impacts the environment. Let's look at growing poultry first and I'm going to use a broiler chicken as an example. Now the kicker about poultry is you need grain to grow them. No matter how many customers at market ask me for a grass-fed chicken, I got to tell them they need grain, be it an egg-laying chicken or a broiler chicken. And that's because chickens are single-stomached animals like you and I and they can't digest forage efficiently enough to live off it alone and they can't catch enough bugs to satisfy their protein requirements. So when you grow a chicken you're feeding grain and by feeding grain you're activating a huge industrial fossil fuel intensive system. By grain I mean oats, soybeans, corn, etc. What does it take to grow those crops? Well the ground has to be tilled, the crop has to be seeded, the crop has to be cultivated or sprayed, the crop has to be harvested, all of that with tractor fuel. Once the crop's harvested, that grain has to be trucked off to a grain mill to be dried, ground, and bagged. And if it's bagged, it's being bagged in non-reusable containers which have to be sent to the landfill after just one use. Or it leaves the mill as bulk as we get it, and it comes to our farm via a big truck fossil fuel everywhere. It's no wonder that our industrial food system requires 10 calories of fossil fuel input to produce one calorie of food output. It's upside down. And don't forget about the herbicides, pesticides, and genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, that are part and parcel of that industrial grain system. Small local farms like ours can mitigate some of this fossil fuel impact by getting more forage and less grain into the birds, putting them on pasture as we do with meat birds in these pasture boxes, and by pasturing our layers so that they can forage for bugs and grass during the summer. But the grain input's still there. Compared to raising poultry, the systems required to raise beef are so elegant and simple. They can be self-contained on a farm as small as this one, 45 acres. And the secret is that all you need is sunlight, rain, and this. The soil on the farm and the plants that grow in that soil. Those plants and the cattle's relationship to them are the secret to sequestering atmospheric CO2 and getting it into the soil. Let me explain how that works. Perennial plants that grow on the pasture use sunlight and rain along with CO2 from the atmosphere and minerals that they're cycling up via their root system from deep in the ground to grow. They have partner bacteria, insects, and fungi making this amazing living web in the soil that help them do that. Here we have the plants growing as the tip of the iceberg of this huge, amazing, diverse soil system. What happens next? Well, a cow comes along and chomps on that plant and eats it. And a cow has this amazing thing called a rumen, which is filled with beneficial bacteria and can do just incredible things with plant matter. In fact, some of that bacteria in the rumen can actually turn that plant matter into more protein for the cow than what the plant had to begin with. A miracle of nature. So in a nutshell, 
a cow is taking sunlight and turning it into meat with the assistance of plants and beneficial bacteria. What could be simpler than that? No fossil fuel needed. And what happens after the cow chomps on that plant? Well, it doesn't hurt the pasture system, it actually helps it because that plant is stimulated to grow faster. Some of its roots die and become more soil, and that soil is principally carbon, which the plants have captured from the atmosphere, and it gets trapped in the soil when those roots die. It benefits all of the critters that exist in symbiosis with the plant because the plant starts growing faster and multiplies. All the insects, the fungi, and the bacteria's populations grows with that. And so we're building more soil, we're sequestering more carbon, and we're creating a healthier planet. More organic matter in that soil means that soil can hold more water, which means it's less susceptible to flood, runoff, and drought. And as this whole system thrives more and more and more soils created and more plants grow and more bacteria, fungi, and insects live in the soil, the whole thing spirals upward creating more and more carbon sequestration and healthy soil. And as one not insequential side effect of all this stuff that's going on, that soil is sequestering more and more CO2 from the atmosphere on a scale that is amazing compared to all the mechanical industrial methods that we've ever come up with. It all happens naturally. Here we have this amazing natural system. What has industrial agriculture done to it? What has it done to the relationship between the cow and the plant, the soil and the microbes, and the sunlight and the water? It substituted fossil fuel based chemical fertilizers for true soil fertility to such an extent that I run into farmers all the time now who don't even know how to create fertile soil. Instead, they just dump chemicals on it. And it took the cow off of the grass and substituted a lot of that grass with grain, which is unhealthy for both the cow and the planet. They tried to take all these components apart and they broke the system. They thought, oh, we can put grain into the cow to make it grow faster, fat, and quicker and move it through the system. But the grain is not good for the cow. It acidifies the room and it kills off some of those beneficial bacteria. And what do they do? They compensate by pumping antibiotics and hormones into these things to make them grow faster under stressful conditions. And not only is the grain unhealthy for the cow, but it's unhealthy for the humans who eat the meat. Grain fat is not good for you, as opposed to grass fat, which is loaded with all kinds of good fats. They broke the soil fertility cycle, the natural relationship between the cow and the pasture. And they put fossil fuel back into the equation by having to feed it grain, which is fossil fuel intensive, and having to truck it to a feedlot to finish it on grain. Who is this they that I keep talking about? Well, they is us. It's humanity. We did what we thought was right in the name of scientific progress, but we lost sight of the whole system. My argument is that we need to recognize our error and understand that we need to go back to that system. That is a huge change, and I'm going to talk about that next. The Lancet article and many other articles following it got both the problem and the solution wrong. They argued that since intensively farmed red meat is bad, we should just throw the whole thing out and quit eating it. The solution should be to fix the system that was broken. Bring the cattle back to the pastures. Grow meat locally so there's less fossil fuel invested in it. And quit feeding grain. Grass finished cattle can be just as good as grain finished cattle, in fact better, if they're grown on healthy pasture. But this is not their solution or any of the billionaires that are investing in the new fake meat industry. Instead of bringing the natural systems back into balance, they argue to further industrialize it by creating fake meats out of all this chemical cocktail that who knows what's in it. How can that be good? That doesn't do anything for the planet. Here's a criticism I get all the time to the point that it almost nauseates me to hear it again. And that is, but this system can't feed the world. And my answer is, why not? You tell me why a grass-fed beef system can't feed the world. Why can't what we do be scaled up? In fact, 
if it were scaled up, this grass-fed meat would probably be cheaper because there's economies in scale. I think it's just an argument people use to maintain the status quo because they can't think of any other solution. The real challenge is not in scaling up this system, but it's dealing with the entrenched interests that want to keep the status quo. The fertilizer companies, the fossil fuel industry, the seed companies, the grain subsidy system, the giant meat corporations. None of them want to change and that's why we're stuck where we are. Here's my call to action. Eat more meat from 100% grass-fed ruminants like cattle that's locally raised following regenerative practices. That's your best option to fight the system. Share this information with your family and friends to help create more informed consumers. As a farmer, I'm looking for elegant natural systems that thrive with the least amount of management. And ruminant grazing fits that bill perfectly. It's about healing a broken system. That's what farming is really about. It's not talking to some corporation about the latest seed hybrids or the latest medicine you can pump into something. It's finding the ways that animals thrive in harmony with their environment. And this is where the Lancet and subsequent articles are completely off base. They don't even look at that perspective. So as you can see, I'm really passionate about this and I'm glad that I got it out. My rant is over. I can go back to farming now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Eat more regenerative beef versus poultry. Have a good day and I'll see you next time.